Welcome to the table. My name is Max. I'm Doolin. And we are really putting ourselves out there today. We're finally... Come at me in the comments, <laughs> brah. Finally <laughs> gonna talk to you all about our top 20 <laughs> favorite board games as of, of all time. As right of now. May 4th, 2021. I'm hoping that this will be an annual May video. It's gonna be May. <laughs> Where we revisit our favorite 20 of all time. And hopefully, as the years go on, that changes multiple times. Because oh, yeah. I would love to be able to say that the games I've played now aren't as good as the ones I'll play this next year. I think they will change. We'll I see. think they will change. Mine has already changed drastically in the past six months. So mm -hmm. That's we'll fair. see where Me it goes. Too. This video is going to be split up into two separate videos. The first video is going to be our number 20 through number 11. Mm -hmm. And the following video is our number 10 through our number one favorite board game of yeah. all So get time. your paper ready, get your coffee ready. Sit We're gonna down, give you some recommendations. Have a chat. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. How are we doing this? Do you wanna start or do you want me to start? I don't care, I can start. Let, let's let, start. let okay. you have the very last one because your list is probably gonna be better than mine. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean it is, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that could be something too. Okay. Pick your favorite list. That's true, yes, yeah, please. Um, and winner will get we a prize. We don't know each other's lists no, at all. Not at all. We're We have hoping, guesses. I yeah, have, of course. I, I I feel like I know your top two or three. Uh, you probably do. Yeah, yeah you probably sure. do. Uh, all right, my number 20. Uh, and we don't have these games to pull out because we're... We're going to grab some of them at as Max's going, house, and my games are mostly at my house. I also don't own every game on my top 20. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Seems like a problem, dude. There's a secret. You're going to find out at number 20. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, these are going to slide in because I'm a cool editor like that. That's <laughs> right. Like that. <laughs> yeah, Just yeah. like that. Yeah. Anyway, my number 20 is Sushi Go Party. Uh, okay. This game is a extremely fun game all the way up to the highest player count, which is, I believe, eight players. Okay. Uh, and I have played it at eight. Love it. Uh, it's a family favorite of... My family. <laughs> um, I was gonna and, ask whose family, and, but. <laughs> and I, I just love the the, the card drafting is simple. Uh, it's the the cards are extremely cute, mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, it's very easy to pull out, very easy to teach, and very quick and fun. And yeah, I've actually never Solid played game. the party version. Way better than the original. So I've heard. So yeah. so, so add so much replayability. Uh, even good all the way down to two play. I should mention that Emily and I play this all the time, just between yeah, the two of video us. Video on our channel. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I forgot Sushi about that. Go was honestly one of the. I mean, I wasn't even into board games. My mom bought Sushi Go from Target or something, mm. and I remember at the time I was like, "Really, mom? Like, <laughs> like you know anything about good board games?" <laughs> and then I played it and I enjoyed it, but kind of forgot about it, and then mm. got into the hobby years later. I was like, "Whoa, people like Sushi Go! Oh, like, it's so great." That wasn't a you know Walmart exclusive. It's, it's legitimately amazing. Like, yeah. I, I think that game is how I. Uh, compare all card drafting right. games, in mm -hmm. all honesty. I'm yeah. curious to see, and I I don't think it will be, but I'm curious to see if the new iteration, including dice, pops up on your list later. Don't tell me. I'm just curious to see. So I'll go ahead and tell you, it does not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Suspension <laughs> is killed. <laughs> I don't want people thinking that I like that game more than Sushi. This is starting off with... My number 20 favorite game of all time. This is one that I no longer own. And this is Bullet by oh. Level 99 Games. Wow, that is some recency bias if it I've is. ever seen it. It is, 100%. I'm surprised. We just played this for the first time and last time. We looked time. really professional. We had our <laughs> fingers crossed like this and like just standing there. like. This yeah. was... Uh, a surprise to me. I really wanted to like it, and I really did like it. I really, truly do. I really much preferred the head-to-head -head timed combat version oh, yeah. where you're passing your bullets to the I other player and receiving... The, yeah, because you don't. But it's just one of those that I really liked. It's also a fairly expensive game, and it's also one that I just don't think I'm going to play that much. Mm. Um, you're not... I mean, you liked it, but you're not a big fan of it. It certainly wouldn't come anywhere near your top 50. And I'm just not sure if I have anyone else around, like my wife or anything, that really would play it. Mm. So I really did enjoy it enough. And like you said, probably recency bias. This probably won't show up in my top Making 20 a year from really now. Bad, man. But gave no, it up. That's you didn't fine. Play that's fine. It. But yeah, it's just one that I didn't need to own. I really liked it, but I don't have to own it anymore. So you I'm loved happy your to play experience it. with it. I did enough, enough to, to make it my top 20. top 20. Yeah. And Max has played. This sounds like 
I mean, Max has played a lot of games. So the fact that like you have that in your top twenty really liked it. speaks volumes of that. I game. really that's, liked that's it. That's incredible, man. I know, I know. It's and a it probably very is, unique game. Like I said, it probably is recency bias because we're all affected by that. But I was just messing with you, man. You oh, I'm to, just, you know, no, man. I'm taking it to heart. Agreed with me. Mm-mm, I'm agreeing with you. All right. So mm-hmm. my number. You looked over there. Nineteen game. You think it's over there? It might be over there. My Code number names. nineteen game. What? Code names. Is in, on your cell. List. I was right, baby. This Let's is a go. not. I'm definitely not selling my copy of this game. Code names specifically the duet. duet version. Uh, duet makes the original code name so much better to me. And granted, I've seen code names actually get a lot more popular as of late. There's actually mm-hmm. a version of it that you it's can. It's really play. easy to play remotely. Yeah, and and there's like a they've released like a. a browser version and a ton of mm-hmm. streamer like popular streamers have been playing it to be fair i think codenames duet is one of the best couples games that you can play i, I here legit, i am and, getting rid of it without having ever played it oh dude it is it is incredible you, the 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 whole mechanic that uh the original codenames is built on is fun i love the idea of trying to connect words that have no no like oh i enjoy like, codenames i think that's great but this variant allows both players to have both of those roles. And I think that that adds to the game so much better because you, you on your turn, you get to be the code break, uh, like code namer, and then mm-hmm. I get to be the code breaker. And then on my turn, we switch, right. and, and we do it over and over again, and you're playing against the game. There's actually even a, a campaign and everything like that that you can, you can play through. It's a really, really great I hadn't great considered variant. about the roles changing every time yeah. in comparison to normal code names where you play the whole game in a certain role and then swap back. I love I like being that. the person that says the, the code oh, yeah. word. And whenever you play group code names, especially if you're in a big group, you might not ever get to play that mm-hmm. when it comes out. Whereas in this, you get to be both the whole game. And I think that's great. Interesting. I am still probably selling it without having <laughs> ever played it. Solid but pick. that's where it goes. I just said that about my own pick. Number but 19 on pick. my list, you can also grab off the shelf if you will. It is Targi in I the top it. left. This is a two player only game published by Cosmos. It's a worker placement two player game. <laughs> it's really all it is is worker placement. Yeah. Um, it's mean, it's blocky, it's dry. It's, it's as dry a board game that I love. I'm not big into dry board games, and you'll see more on my list. They don't really do it for me. Mm. Targi is We're really excellent. big into thematics. Yeah, we're really sure. big into thematics. But Targi is so good. It's it's easy to understand. It's easy to set up. The outside ring that you're constantly walking around is the same every time you play. So there's a bit of like understanding and building on what you know to how to play it better the next time. Mm. And it is a full two-player experience. We both love two-player games. We get them played more regularly than most other games. Especially, I mean, we've been in this hobby for a little while. Mm-hmm. Me, maybe a little bit longer than you, but we've both taken a huge dive at the same time. Yeah. And it, uh, most of that has been during the pandemic. Yep. And so two-player games have been our focus. Yeah. I mean, you're going to notice that. Uh, but very rarely does a game that doesn't have a two-player variant get in my collection. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. This one is a full-fledged board game. I mean, mm. I don't know how else to describe it. There are other two-player board games that take 60 minutes, that take a while, but I feel with this one, I get a full experience mm. of a board game in a two-player concise package, yeah. whereas with many other two-player board games, I feel unsatisfied in mm. some way, shape, or form because, I mean, even if they're great, maybe they just only lasted 15 minutes and I, you know, sometimes that's great, you want to go again, but sometimes you just want that full night gaming experience and I think Targi does it excellently. I've only played it a handful of times, or several times, not even a handful at this point. I'm really excited to play it with you as well. Yeah, I've never but played it actually, this is, so I'm pumped. Yeah, it's probably as dry a game that'll make it on my list. Maybe. I think there's a couple more, but... I'm excited to try it. Yeah, it's great. It's All great. right, mine... My next one. It's I also on my shelf. That you, how do you know? No, because you're looking around. That's I, why I said it's oh, also totally on my shelf. Oh, you totally have. Cool. Uh, so my number three. They probably can't hear you very well. My number three You're is. You're number three? No, sorry. Wow. <laughs> uh, my number 18 is <laughs> Love Letter. Uh, this, hmm. I, you might have seen an Instagram post of our a picture I took. Wow, what a it random is, plug there, Julian. <laughs> it is, it is the most portable game I it think is. I have for yeah. sure and one of my fondest memories of this is actually breaking this out uh, we 
one of my friends was getting married. I was a groomsman, and we realized that we had all gotten ready early, and was we had this, nothing to oh do. Oh, no, this wasn't last weekend. No, okay. uh, we had nothing to do. I didn't have a wedding I went to. No, I know, but you had a bachelor party. Yeah, 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 that's true. Uh, either way, we, we realized we had nothing to do uh, for, like, 20 minutes, and one of them was like, what do you all want to do? I was like, could be a love letter. And they were like, really? You have a game? And I was like... Yeah, it's like this big. It's really <laughs> tiny. It's I'm, in my pocket. I'm that, I'm that nerdy guy. Do you who... have a love letter in your pocket, or are you just excited to see me? <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> anyway, love letter. I pulled out. We had a good time and got everybody laughing moments before we had this really cool memory. And yeah. I, I, I think this game is not like the most, like, like you're not going to get hours and hours and hours of game time out of it unless you just really, really like it. I do, too. I would probably play with you for, like, two or three hours this game. But I love this game as a... Uh, we've, we've mentioned the word... Filler um, or uh, appetizer. Appetizer. Mm -hmm. uh, this game constantly finds its way on my table, mm -hmm. uh, especially after a really thanky game, uh, especially if I'm with people who might not be, like, huge huge board gamers, but they like card games or simple, uh, like, uh, uh, hidden, hidden role games, mm -hmm. like, uh, really easy to break out. You'll notice, uh, on my top 20, especially the lower half of it is games that are simple because the people I play with, it's really easy to introduce them to, and, and I play them the most and enjoy them the, the most. The reason I threw that game was to try and distract the cat and not <laughs> jump on the table. I like Love Letter. It's yeah. definitely portable. It's the size of a deck of cards. It's just a hair bigger. Um, but, yeah, it's good. It's certainly not anywhere near my top 20 or anything. Uh, it's, it's definitely a fun game. I have had multiple times where it's overstated its welcome a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like, it just won't end. Everyone's got three cubes or whatever when you need four <laughs> to end. And Oh, I, I rarely play that way anyway. Like, it's oh, just really? like, you just okay. play until we want to stop, and then we stop. And maybe that's the way to go. Yeah. I don't think I've ever played without going for four cubes for mm -hmm. Victor and whatnot. So, I don't know. It's a very good game. It's not leaving my shelf. I'm not calling it. It's tiny. I mean, there's no reason to, but <laughs> it's definitely not in my top 20. <laughs> Thank you, Draco. Up, he Draco. agrees. Number 17 for me, number 18, is on my shelf. What is it? I'll grab it. You're going to grab it? I'll grab it. What is it? I played this one. This is Biblios. I, I'm noticing a trend here. The games that you pick as your favorite... Are games I don't play with you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't play with, but to be fair, I played Blow with you. Yeah. So. Biblios is great, and it is a game about being a monk and being smart and gaining... Uh, books and knowledge, and I'm forgetting at the top <laughs> yeah, of my head. Play. Look, this game is dry. <laughs> the theme is not even there. It's non-existent. This mm. theme could be anything at all, and it would probably be better served for it. If they replaced the monk theme with many other things, it would probably move up my list because this game is packaged in a boring, ugly package <laughs> with a dry theme, and it's incredibly fun. Hmm. It's so simple. I love that it's a two-phase game, hmm. where in the first phase, you know, it's been a minute since I've played it, so I'm not even gonna try and explain it super well, but in the first phase, you are basically, you're, you're taking cards and you're adding them to three separate piles. Your pile, or the uh, auction pile, or you're giving it to a friend if you have to. You have those three choices, basically, okay. or your opponent, not your friend. And then what's in the auction pile in phase two is then auctioned off by spending the cards you've acquired in phase one. And all the while, the scoring tracks are moving. So basically, yellow cards can score you one point at the end of the game if you win that category, whereas blue cards can score you six if you win that category. Because mm -hmm. all throughout the game, they start at three, and you're moving them and rotating them to make certain categories worth more gotcha. and certain categories okay. work less. And basically, whoever has the majority in those categories wins that section. I understand why Biblios would make you yawn. I, I it, wanted, I was going to cut to your face there, but I was like, gosh dang it, this yawn will go away. It's just a very good game. Mm. I'm going to have to teach this one to you as well. I'm Shout excited. out to Mark Peseda from Board Game Barrage. I would have never given this game a shot if he didn't plug it in every single Board Game Barrage episode yeah, there is. Yeah, I was going to say, when you just the sole <laughs> reason I tried this game out, and I'm, I am better for it. Um, I'm wondering if that company 
is on your list again with another game. We'll see. Ooh, we'll see. I don't know. I don't know. What else would they be on? Oh, yeah, they are, actually. Okay. Uh, they're next up. <laughs> really? Okay. So. All right. Oh, I'm glad I called I it. so, yeah. All right. Um, so far, we've not had any crossovers. <laughs> yeah, they're uh, next up. <laughs> I almost guarantee you that this one will be on his list, okay. but way higher. So oh. we won't talk about it too much. I bet I know what you're saying. But number 17 on my list is Cthulhu Death yep. May Die. Yep, I knew uh, it. This, the, Max owns all of it. This is the first game on my list that I don't I am own. missing Scarlet, the season two Kickstarter exclusive investigator. Okay, well. Everything else, though. Does it really matter no. then? Like, <laughs> at, at that point, was it even worth having? Yeah, I should, I should just get it? rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you should call it. Um, uh, anyway, you have pretty much all of it. I don't own any of it, but I figure that Max is probably not going to get rid of it anytime I'm soon. Not. Mm -mm. We've played it together probably four times. Yeah. Four Several, times now. at least. Uh, and I, I mean, being a person who loves a lot of cool mini or not uh, games, uh, this one caught me by surprise by how much I would like it because I'm not a huge fan of the theme. In fact, if the theme were a little bit different, it might be one of my top three, four, or five. I'm just not as into Cthulhu as right. you are. Um, well, I'm not even in C into Cthulhu particularly. <laughs> we'll talk about this later. I like the cosmic horror. I don't yeah. care about Cthulhu. I just like horror and stuff like I that. I think it's so. good, though. I, I, I love the way that the game works. I love the leveling up system. Uh, I love the, the boss monsters especially, mm -hmm. like the way they work. I think that's incredible. Uh, we'll, we'll pass, though, because I assume... Yeah, you that will is, hear more about that later. This is something we're going to hear 100%. about probably in the next video, if 100%. I'm being honest. So you can go ahead and grab it, since I'm pretty sure you know exactly which one's coming up next. Oh, sweet! This is... I called it. This is the first one I called. It's to the left. Up. There. Yep. This is Decrypto, also by ELO. <laughs> I love Decrypto. I'm actually surprised it's not higher on my list. Hmm. Coming in at number 17... This game has replaced code names for me for the most part. Mm. It's replaced code names for me as the game that I want to play. Mm. Code names is a simpler and more streamlined experience to set down on the table and teach newcomers right away and get started right away. Yeah. I won't I won't discredit that at all. This game is much more difficult to explain. It's a simple game, but it is deceptively decryptedly difficult to explain and get someone to understand. It's one of those you kind of just have to jump in, say, hey, let's play around, Let, let's let walk through this, and then you'll get it. But once that's done, man, this game is awesome. It's, it's great. It's really fun. It's so good. It, it probably relies a little heavier on group than Codenames. For sure. Codenames, you can play with a random group of 20 people at a party, mm -hmm. whereas Decrypto is mostly better kept within solid friends or couples or family or something like that, just because of the way you're going to give and handle clues in this game is just, you kind of need to know each other yeah. a little more than you need to know each other in code names. And I'll say, Decrypto is not on my list, but it it is pretty high up in my, I would say if we did a top 40, it'd be in my top yeah. 40. It's a great game. Uh, I do like that you compared it to code names. The, mm -hmm. I think the people who like hard not to. code names will like Decrypto and, yeah. and vice versa. Yeah, I think it totally just depends on what you're looking for. For me, I'm looking for a slightly meatier, a little more fun to me experience with a little more decryption, mm. and then Codenames is that, let's get to the table faster and still have a good time. Codenames is great, but Decrypto has replaced it yeah. for me personally. Cool. All right, number 16. Number 16. My number 16 game, I am i don't think you have it okay. up there. It's okay, but it's on both of our phones. Uh, this is Star Realms, Frontiers. Okay. I have played quite a bit of this game uh, physically. I've also played, I Way think, more on the phone, right? Dude, I think my account is up to like 600 something games of Star Realms Frontiers on my iPhone. I enjoy this game. I'm pretty sure my phone stats say I've played like seven games. I mean, I've barely played it. I love this game. It's a, it's a uh, how, how would you describe this game? It's, it's a very simple drafting game. Yeah, it's a game. card drafting yes. resource. I mean, light resource management, mm -hmm. trying to use your gold and your fight power. It's a basically. deck building game. I'm done. Yeah. I'm done. Oh, yeah, that's it's a deck word. building game. Yep. Uh, you you are We're spending. Dumb. I forgot too. You're spending your cards. I was like, what is the name of it? You're spending your cards and all. We of don't them. deserve to be here. <laughs> <laughs> and and all of them, based on their colors, will uh, interact with each other mm -hmm. in different ways. That's my favorite thing yeah. about is getting that that hand that you're trying to build up towards, uh, and you're burning a bunch of your crappy cards so that you can have like all of your best colors that all interact with one another to where you just put it out there. And I, I think I've gotten to the point uh, where uh, 
I hit somebody for at least 50 or 60 damage, and I felt amazing. I felt like, like I, I, I drew my entire deck. I went through all of it and played it all on the same thing, and I was just like, yes! Like, I felt, like that game is is fueled by your longing for those moments of mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. I'm going to find a way to make a catalyst with this card to draw these two cards which make me draw this extra card which which in turn powers up this card and like so on and so forth. Right. It's a great game. I love on top of that if you've never played the physical edition, there's a co-op version or a single player version where you play against these uh, AI characters, and they're really fun to play against. It is strictly a two, well, other than solo. It's one to two player, right? You can't play with you, any more? You, not against each other. Okay. In, the In the cooperative mode, you, you can. can play up to four. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think it's a game I would like if mm. I spent more time on it. I've enjoyed my plays of it. Mm. I just haven't played it enough. I think you would love it more if you played the physical copy. Probably. We should, we should play it together. I mean, I'm, I just enjoy physical games more than mm-hmm. digital games anyways, but... I do like it. Yeah. I do like it. I'm not. I'm not upset that it's on your list. It's nowhere near mine. You shouldn't but I'm be not upset. upset about it. You're not allowed to be upset. All right. It's next for me, I think this is going to be a shocker for you. All right. Is it a game I play? Yeah. Is it a game you own? Yeah. Wingspan. No. Uh, I don't know, dude. I'm, is it recent? Fairly. Fairly recent. Uh, H. H. Holmes. Nemesis is going this low? <laughs> Dude, know. you were like convinced this was your number one game not too I long know. ago. I know, I know. It's dropping dramatically. I know. It's still in my top 20. Look, it's still in my top 20. But I knew this was gonna be <laughs> I knew this was gonna be a surprise for you. What? This is still in my top 20. It's still great. Are you about to, like, get rid of this game? I mean, I told you that I was considering the possibility of it because of other things that don't do the same thing, but do a similar enough thing in a smaller, more concise package. Look, this game is great. It's a movie in a box. It genuinely is. It's so fun. I want to play it again. I think getting it back to the table and having a better experience than you and Jesse playing the crew while we I made die. You, we made you hate the game. We made you hate the game. I'm so sorry. <laughs> that experience soured it for me a little. If you don't know what we're talking about, the gameplay is up on our channel. Go check it out. When you rewatched it, did it make it worse? I don't think I rewatched it. I think I was mad. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Look, I love this game, and I've played it four <laughs> times, three times, and two of them have been nine out of ten experiences, mm. and then one of them was a three and a half out of ten experience. Oh, dude. And so it, it was has such fallen. good content. It though. was. It was. Oh. It was funny. I was just sad because I was alone, dying on a ship while you all played the crew. Josh left you. I know. I mean, I was the only one that died. I couldn't. I couldn't. That's man. the thing about this game, though, is that like most cooperative games, like I, I will p- be the biggest team player. I will set up my friends to win their thing before I win my thing. But with this game, the no, moment you see your chance, out. you're out. Like, yeah. and, and that's because you don't know if the other people are against you or for you, right. and you don't know if everything they've been doing up to this point has been to screw you over. Right. So when you find a way to get out, Look, you you take it. I don't blame you. <laughs> I'd have done the same thing, but <laughs> it definitely brought it down it from it. top five, top ten material to top twenty. It's still top twenty. I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon. Yeah. I think it's gonna remain in my top twenty for a while. Yeah. But I wanna play it again and get that the good taste back mm-hmm. in my mouth. And I don't know. I'm I'm surprised myself that it's this low, mm-hmm. but I'm I'm holding true to the algorithm. I only made a few changes after running this through the little pick your game thing. Mm-hmm. So this was one of them that just fell fall falling down oh, a little man. bit. It's falling down a little bit. It's probably because you have zero respect for games. I think you're right. <laughs> we'll cut that if you want. No, <laughs> Danielle mentioned that in our video last night. <laughs> Hello. All right. What's um, next? Anyway, what's number? What number are we on? Uh, 16? 15. 15. Okay. Number 15. I should just look at what I haven't said Yeah, yet. what you wrote before. Uh, number 15, you don't have either, I don't think. Um, well, one, one last look over. I mean, you can tell me what it is. I'll tell you if I have it. No. No, you don't. 
which is interesting because it's also a great game. It's it's ranked really, really high, which is interesting to me that it's still ranked really, really high because it's been out a while. Uh, I do remember this being in like the top 10 for forever, which actually really? is the reason I bought it. Uh, but this was like back in my college days. I played easily uh, the very first month I had it, probably 12 to 30 games of it. Like we played this every night, maybe a couple times a night. And it is, you ready? Mm hmm. Dead of Winter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Love this game in the same realm of Nemesis where you could possibly yeah. have one person Hidden against traitor. you. Uh, and you have no idea if they've been working this whole time against you or not. Uh, this game is just a zombie survival thematic game mm -hmm. that I love. Like, you're going around trying to get your resources, you're fighting zombies, you're defending your home, you're doing all these things. And at the, at, at the time was the height of, like, Walking Dead hype. Right, yep. And I was I in the middle of all of that. And, and this game made me feel like I was in the show that I was loving at the time. Uh, and... Don't really like the show anymore, yeah, but you know, uh, Game of Thrones, Walking Dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, I think the game, the part of the game that stands out the most to me, which I know some people are like, "Man, I could take it or leave it," is the crossroads cards. You okay. know what I'm talking about? Yep, I do know what you're talking uh, about. Where the Plat person on your crossroad left stuff draws yeah. one, mm -hmm. and and they decide like whether or not in your turn you met the criteria for that crossroads card to be read. It adds so much to the story and makes the replayability so much better. I, I love this game. It's in, it's incredible. I, and it. It's another game that I've sold without ever playing. You, um, what, you've never played Dead I've of Winter. I've never played Dead I, of Winter. I own it and at, at least one of the expansions. So it was on my sell list. I actually gave it to my brother and his partners. Okay. Um, they were, they saw it on the shelf. We're like, oh, we got to have this. Have they played it? Uh I don't know that they've played it. Um, one of them has played it and okay. loves it. And I don't think that the whole group has played mm. it. But mm -hmm. um, So they, they've taken that from my collection. I no longer own it. Mm. Uh, it's one that I just, it sat in shrink. It's still in shrink, probably. But uh, it's one I probably like. Zombies are cool. I like zombies. Mm -hmm. But they're not something that, like, really... I'm, I'm kind of with you. I loved The Walking Dead for a while. And then since then, I've kind of just been zombied out, I guess. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. But I regardless, still zombies. It is one that I want to try, and I know it was for, like super well loved for a while, but mm -hmm. not one I really have much to say on, unfortunately. I think you're gonna be surprised about this next one too. We we are such big theme people. We are. Like we should start our channel and call it Themer Themer. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, Do you yeah. think they'd be okay with that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, Themer that is, squared. That's my last. <laughs> <laughs> Themer squared. That's Themer, not bad. Themer cubed. That's not bad. I like that. I think you're gonna be pretty pretty surprised by this one too. I'm not gonna pull it out because it's huge. This is Twilight Imperium Four. That surprise me. Coming in at number fifteen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's on my for sale list right now with the playmat and the fleet stands and a sleeved game that has never been opened. I played this game one time with Henry and with you and mm -hmm. with Josh and I forget who else was it Warren. Warren played and had an absolute blast. Yeah. And looked it up on Facebook Marketplace, a dude was selling it locally, sleeved, I snagged it, and also Nemesis at the same time, and I just haven't played it. And I love it, and if I think that I could play it twice a year, I think it may be in a top 10 position, mm. but I just don't have the spoons or the people or the time to really table this game. To be fair, we played it right before the pandemic, nope. like, ramped up. Yeah. And mm -hmm. there's no way for you to have been played in it. Right. So like I don't, bought it in like March or something. Yeah, don't hate Max for it. Like there's a reason it's not been played. Yeah. And and it's still one that I don't want to sell. Yeah. The I was gonna say it's, it's expensive. Yeah. There's a chance that you might be making a mistake that you'll try to rectify once we're able to get yeah. game groups again. I will but say I understand why you're thinking about it. I also have been slightly swayed into wanting to try Eclipse oh, uh, yeah. Second Dawn and see where that sits. Mm. Because I think that's a little less negotiation, a little less politics, which is part of why I love Twilight Imperium, but in a three to four hour package. And we played our one game in less than six hours with the dinner break, which I was so happy with. Mm. 
apparently that's not the norm. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Apparently yeah, yeah. that's an unusually short game of Twilight Imperium at five players. I think it was my fault. Well, maybe, probably. <laughs> I really do. You know why? Because I set... And didn't take the point. On the middle yeah, thing, and I said, yeah. let me sit here and I'll never take the point. Never attack me. But then again, I, taking the points would have pushed in game even no, more. No, because people would have been fighting. Yeah, like The turns would have lasted a lot longer. But anyways, it was a less than six hour game, which I loved. Mm -hmm. I don't know that it would retain a top 20 spot on my list if I played it two more times at 10 plus hours each. Mm. It's an epic game. Mm. An epic game that I really love and am willing to put the time into play, but I don't know. I'd have to experience it at 10 plus hours to see if my heart's still in it when that <laughs> time crosses the double digit mark. That's just, yeah. I don't know. It's still at number 15. It's at number 15 and on my sell list because I don't know if I'll ever play my own copy, but... I don't really want to get rid of it. It's it's a very polarizing one that I'm I'm desperately clinging on to, but I yeah. don't know. Yeah. Well, cool. All right. I'm interested Number to know what your top ten is now because there are some that you've named already that Twilight and PM and there. Nemesis both and Decrypto maybe even. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. So number fourteen is one that's already been talked about. It is surprisingly higher than what you have it. It is Nemesis. Really? I, okay. I love Nemesis. I think that uh, every single time I've played it, it's been a blast. Literally, I've, I've <laughs> literally I've killed the queen twice. Like yeah. I, I've always played as a soldier. Though. Let's be, let's put a little asterisk yeah. here. You refuse to play with anyone that's not the captain. <laughs> I, I mean, you refuse to play with anyone that's not the. Well, captain. No, not the captain. It's the soldier. I'm sorry, the soldier. Yes, the soldier. Yes. I, I, and to be fair, you I, basically want to just load up your Gatling gun and it's so fun. Load though. into the queen. It is so fun though to have a reload in your hand. And to have the, uh, like, unload your weapon Yeah, the full auto or something. And to play that, and people be like, Josh, are you sure you want to lose And then you wipe out the queen. And then I then I just destroy whatever I aim at, and then I'm like, and reload. <laughs> like, <laughs> and it's just the best and feeling. It's the best feeling ever. And, yeah, no, every single time we've played it, I've felt like the protagonist in a story. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. I really do fun. think that the last one just soured it for me. Hmm. I we should that... play it, and I'll let you be... The, I don't know. It's the not the soldier. being a soldier that soured it. It was. I know. I'm I telling you that. that there is an experience that you've not had with this That's game. That's true. That's true. That <laughs> you, the moment that it doesn't become scary and you feel like the real You're monster the on the ship, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like that's what. That's how I felt every time we played. And yeah, no, you you need to try it. Wow. Yeah. I must have just had a bad experience. You're last gonna time. be soldier next time we play. All right, I own this one, but Number I 14? don't see it on my list. I mean, on my on shelf. your shelf. Where did it go? <laughs> I don't know where this game is. Am I borrowing it? No. Are you sure? I don't think so. Number fourteen on my list is the Doctor himself, Reiner Knizia's Babylonian. I am borrowing it. Oh, you are. It's at my house. Oh, okay, that's where it is. <laughs> I didn't think you had it. I didn't know that. <laughs> The more you know. <laughs> yeah, Babylonia <laughs> is one of Reiner Knizia's newest releases. I believe a 2019 I'm proud release. Of you. It almost made my top 20. Really? It's so good. It's so good. Mm -hmm. It's really good. Man, it's so simple. It's very new, too. Yeah, right? it's yeah. new. And it's so under the radar. Mm. Mm -hmm. Like, Reiner Knizia is a prominent designer. Granted, he's designed hundreds of games, and mm -hmm. not all of them have been successes. Mm. But he's a pretty popular name that people care about. He's got another game coming out soon that... Shot up to the number one on BGG Hotness for a while, just with the announcement of it. Yeah. But something about Babylonia has just made it fly under the radar. I don't know yeah. if it's that it's too similar to Samurai or Tigers and Euphrates or whatever. I've never played much of Reiner Knizia's older stuff, but Babylonia is such a tight experience. Mm. Decisions every single action and every single turn that greatly impact the game. And the pieces are so cool. The pieces are unique and yeah. interesting, and it's... A thirty to forty-five minute game. Oh yeah, and you get so and the map expands much based on how that. many players you have it. Yeah. Like I want to badly play this game at three and four players. Absolutely, count. yeah, yeah. I have um, played it at two and four. I've never played it. At, no, that's not true. I have played it at three. I think I don't even remember with who, but I think <laughs> I've played it at all player counts and loved it every time. Mm. It the decision space it gives you in such a short amount of time is just I I don't I don't know why this is flying under the radar. Mm. I love Babylonia. Um. 
just to give you a little bit more credibility for having this in your top 20, another, I, I, I would consider them popular. I listen to their podcast all the time, uh, but Bite Wing Game. Bite Wing Games, yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. He has this I on his top 10. I read their reviews. I've not listened to their podcast. Yeah, but... he, he put out his top 20 okay. on, on his podcast recently, and it's in his top 10. I it's also one that was in Board Game Barrage's top 50 for several of the really? hosts. Very cool. Um, I don't, or maybe it was close. It, mm. They talked about it during their top 50. Yeah. I don't know if it was, it's in my top 50 or it's just outside, but it is loved by many people, yeah. but just not the hit or the popular success that you'd really think it would be. But you should try it. Like if this is, if our talk on this has, or even our playthrough has mm -hmm. piqued your interest, try this game. It, it, I, I think it will surprise most people it's who play so it. so good. I want to yeah. play it right now. Now that I'm talking about it, I'm like, because we can play it while we're talking because it's so short. Yeah. And, and it's not too thinky, but it's also yeah. thinky at the same time. I don't yeah. know. It's fun. All right, number 13, I think you'll be surprised at how low this is made on my list. How low, like, towards uh, number one, or how low it's fallen towards the back end of 20? Fall it toward the back end. Okay. Uh, this is... I have a guess, but I'm not... Oh, no, not if you're looking at my shelf. I don't have a guess anymore. Azul. I am surprised. Azul. Now, this game, I've probably wow. played more in the last year than I've played any other game by far. This Just was two a players for the most part? Staple, yes. This was a staple in my home... More so by Emily. In fact, I would probably dare say this might be her number one game. Like her favorite she game of all time. She loves right. this She game. has a, a little bit of personal connection to yes, Azul absolutely. as well. Absolutely, for sure. Um, but that being said, this game is fantastic. I would say it's one of... If I were to play any other game like it, which I have, I mean, Calico, Bees, like any game that's similar in nature to this pattern-building... Uh, with like little pieces that you collect game, I always compare it to Azul mm -hmm. in yep. my head because this game did it so well. I, I, I can't speak enough on it. I, Emily and I have gotten to the point where it is so strategic uh, that we can't play with new players anymore. Like we just, just we love this game. You just crush them. Uh, and we, we've played it, man, this was our pandemic staple. And I think that's part of the reason why it started to lose like positions Some on me luster. because I'm I'm realizing that it's not as fun to pull out anymore. I, mm -hmm. I, I don't know yep. if consecutive playthroughs are going to add anything to this game. I've anymore. not played this game nearly as much as you have and that's mm -hmm. already the kind of experience that I was getting out mm -hmm. of it is that it was very, fairly samey almost every time I played mm -hmm. it, it. It felt fairly similar. Not, not the exact same, but enough so that it really wasn't something that was striking me, something I really wanted to pull out. Um, both Sagrada and Calico are games that I would rather play over mm. Azul. Really? I do love Azul. Mm. I think it's great. It's easily the most accessible of the three. Yeah. Uh, Azul's the one that you pull out with people that haven't played them before. Yes. And then you step them up to Sagrada, and then you step them up to Calico if yes. they're interested in that order. But to me, they just offer more thinky, fun puzzles and less and more variability, less of the same that Azul yeah. seems to be. And I also prefer Summer Pavilion over this. Oh, yeah. And now that I'm talking... I'm realizing that I literally forgot Azul, Azul Summer Pavilion, Sagrada, and Calico when thinking my top, top 20. 20. I'm not saying they'd all make it, but yeah. I don't even think I had them in the list to calculate my That's top 20. That's surprising to me. That's really yeah, surprising Sagrada to me. Sagrada and Calico would be considered. I almost put Sagrada in there. I, Man. I will admit something on our channel now uh, that I said uh, would, would be a possibility at the time of making the video, but we made a Bees versus Azul video. Mm -hmm. uh, I still love Bees, and it is close to my top 20. It's definitely in my top 30, I would say. But Azul has taken its yeah. rightful place, in my opinion. Uh, I think Bees is great, but I, I thought the same after playing it, that Azul yes. would have more legs than Bees yes. would. It definitely does. Bees have legs, though. So, I don't know. I think Bees still has that replayability, but Azul is just more of a competitive game. And mm -hmm. competitive games find their way to my table more with sure. Emily and I. So, Man, yeah, that's I'm it. really wondering whether Sagrada or Calico would have made my list now. I love them both. Well, we're going to cut in between the top 10. So, I mean, you could put it in I your top 10. I could check to see if they make my top 10. But then you have to remove the game in your top 10. <laughs> Whatever. We'll add them later if they go with it. I'm not sure that they'd make it. This is another one. Oh, we only have, I only have two more. You have three more. On my shelf, I've actually never played this copy of Castles of Burgundy. That's surprising to me. Really? Yeah, I know that it's like everybody's favorite and everything, and they it's include so it in good. top 20. 
It's good. No, it's so good. It's good. Get out of my house. Okay. No, you can stay. <laughs> Look, Castle of Burgundy I even own it. I like it. It's, it's great. It's I don't... It's been a while since I've played it. I'll fully admit, I literally don't think I've played this game in over a year. No, we, we have, because you taught it to me. Did I? Year. Yeah. I taught this game to you? Mm-hmm. Are you sure? Mm-hmm. You're lying. I promise. I don't remember any of that. I've never <laughs> played with any of the expansions. I've actually never played with this one. I sold my base game for the prettier one, which is not any prettier. It just came with the expansions. Yeah. So it's still ugly, unfortunately. I wish they would make this game prettier, more accessible, mm. color looking. I don't know what it is. Castle Burgundy is one of the driest games I own, one of the Euroist, Euroist games I own. You may see Hansa Teutonica in the background. I've not played it. Um, but I, I really do just love it. It's, it's like, simple enough that you can teach people. It's got the dice mitigation with the workers, and it's an excellent two-player game. It mm, works. I've never played it at two. Oh, it, it might be best at two. Mm. It works very well at two. I, it has to stay in my top 20 for now. Again, I haven't played it in a long time. I don't think I've played it this year. I think you're lying. But if I have, I don't remember it. And I need to get it to the table again to really see if it deserves its spot in my top 20. Mm. My memory says yes. Got it. Yeah. But it's been a minute, and I need to find out for sure. But I do love Castle of Burgundy. I actually just sold Castles of Tuscany without ever actually playing it. Yeah. And one of those things, I was like, I'm going to get it and play it, and then... I'm going to sell it, but regardless, <laughs> Burgundy's amazing in my top 15. What was that, number 13? Number 13. We're moving on to number 12, and I'm, from here on out, very, very sure of my list. Are you? I love, I'm still not. I'm I never love sure my top my 12. Okay. I love my top 12. They'll be there for a while, I'm sure. All right, number 12 mm -hmm. is, you want to take a guess? Last Night on Earth. No. Uh, it's higher. Pandemic. <laughs> oh, I be Gross. I Gross, get Pandemic out. Iberia is amazing, and shame on you for not liking it. It is a beautiful version of this game where it's like got the Spanish theme in it, and I love all of the player powers that it adds to the game. I love the extra mechanics that it adds to the game. Everything about this game is perfect. Don't even say that. Perfect. Look, Pandemic not Iberia 10, is but. better than Pandemic for sure. Uh, most and games recently, are for what than for whatever reason, it's gone up in like a ton of yeah, it's money. like seventy dollars now. Emily loves this game too. Where to the point where I was like, Emily, I mean, you didn't hear the joke that I like, said. I thought you'd you like that. What'd you say? I said Pandemic Iberia is certainly better than Base Pandemic because most games are. Oh my gosh! But, <laughs> okay, whatever. <laughs> Look, if you have watched Danielle and I talk on this channel, both Danielle and I are haters of Pandemic. We would you be open? To a game night with Emily and I, where we play Pandemic. I, I would be okay if you can convince Danielle. Okay, she. Re I don't like Pandemic, but she really doesn't like Pandemic. We actually went into that on a video we recorded last night about Pandemic. Really? Yeah. I don't <laughs> look. It's the quarterbacking. I genuinely oh. think so. It's mm -hmm. the quarterbacking, and that's why Pandemic to me is not a co-op game that I want to play. Mm. If I want to play a co-op game, I want to play something like. Cthulhu or like Spirit Island where there's no real opportunity for me to be like this is exactly what we need to do we need to use your power to go here we need to do this mm -hmm. we need to get this and we win the game because sure you win but it's not fun for anyone else mm -hmm. and I don't think I'm particularly bad at that but maybe in our first and only game of Pandemic I was this was two years ago I don't know maybe I maybe I quarterback that whole game and that's why she hates it mm -hmm. but I genuinely think that for me a game that allows that quarterbacking is just not one I really care to play yeah and that's just I what Pandemic that. does to me. I will say that the added bonuses of everything that is in Pandem Pandemic Iberia makes it feel a lot more asymmetric. Mm -hmm. Like the player, like the individual players, you stick, like if you're the railroad guy, nobody is going to be able to really understand what you're doing other than you because okay. you're going around and building the railroad I played while everybody else is game. using what you're building to do all these different things. I think it's great. I played a half yeah, You joined in halfway Iberia through mine. Yeah. And I did enjoy it more than mm -hmm. base pandemic, but... I think this is worth worth playing, and my goodness, is it hard to find right now. Look, if y'all can convince Danielle, I'd happily do it. <laughs> Number 12 on my list, you might be borrowing this one as well, is Awkward Guests. Oh, yeah. This is basically my Clue replacement of all the classic board games. Yeah. Clue is is good, actually. And I think also with, one of my favorites 
of that genre. I love that deduction. Yeah, I uh, think with subsequent plays, this will probably make it way its way to my yeah. Because we've well. only played it together once, mm -hmm. and I don't think you've played it with I, Emily I, at all yet. I, well, Emily played it with us, but right? But yeah, I mean, yeah. like by not, not just so you've only played it one time. Mm -hmm. I've only played it three times, um, but to me, it's one of those games that you could play a hundred times because with the app. Not only does it, it uh, improve on Clue, where if you look at the the, the answers, <laughs> yeah. if I can talk, you're, you're kicked out because you know the answers. Yeah. With the app, you can guess, and you're penalized by not being able to guess the following round, but you're not kicked out. Mm. And then the app also just randomizes the encounter. The setup is not hard. It's a few, you know, it takes five minutes to pull out the cards and get that set up, but it's not difficult. And to me, it's just totally replaced Clue. No real desire to play Clue anymore. Not that anyone ever play it with me anyways, because I always won. <laughs> but I like Awkward Guess, and I want to try more of those Search for Planet X, Decrypto, mm. Decrypto, not Decrypto, um, Cryptid, stuff like that. Uh, but for me, so far, Awkward Guess is amazing and certainly deserving of its spot in my top 20. That's really cool. I'm, I... I'm looking forward to playing yeah, more. Yeah, I, I think, too, that with more subsequent plays that it might rise up on your list. All right. Number 11 hurts a little bit to put it this low. Because it's not in your top 10? Yeah. I want it to be in my top 10. But, and I think if I play it more, it might get there. I think I need to play it with more people. That's my problem with this game right I'm now. trying to guess. It is. Ah, oh, this hurts. What is this low? It is villainous. Villainous Ooh. is... Such a good game that I love, and I have yeah, most of the expansions for, <laughs> for. That being said, I, I, I don't want to say anything bad about it. It's number 11 on my list. Oh, yeah. Anything it in is, here is a good game. It is incredible to play. Yes. Emily and I have made this habit of every time we play it against one another, uh, we watch one of the two villains' movies Which is at so the cool. same time. I think that's awesome. Yeah, and, and we... We make a night of it. Like it, it's just a very fun date night game. If you're if you're a couple or if you just want to have fun with a friend, you know, like playing a game, absolutely play one of the movies while you watch it, and you'll be singing along to. And as you play the cards, you'll be like, "That's what literally we're watching," like type of thing. <laughs> and and it's it's a lot of fun. It, it, uh, on top of that, forget about the movies. The asymmetric game where every single character is a basically a mini board game mm -hmm. is really neat to me. Uh, they're like every I would say they vary from good to amazingly well done versions of their movies in mm -hmm. each of the experiences. Some are a lot simpler, like yes. Prince John, where yeah. you want 20 gold, 20 power, and yes. you win the game. And exactly. others are a lot more complex, yes. which is nice. Yeah. Like Radigan, for instance, like I think he's one of my favorites, specifically because his just feels so much like the actual movie mm -hmm. as you play it. Okay. And I, I just love that. Uh, speaking of which, do you know what that movie's from? Uh... Uh, the Great Mass Detective. Good job. Yeah, I've actually not seen that until the last year. It was one of my favorites growing up. Really, but it's been one of Emily's a decade too. and a half since I've seen it. But I love it. Yeah, it was not one that I would have sold if you didn't reach out to mm -hmm. me. I think you texted me. You were like, "This game's in my cart. I'm gonna buy it." My literal shopping cart at Walmart. <laughs> um, <laughs> You're like, "I'm gonna get this game unless you want to sell it." It mm -hmm. was not in my sell list, mm -hmm. but knowing that it's going to you, I'm comfortable letting this game go. I really like it. I think it excels at the two to three player count. I don't think I'd want to play it anything more than that. Yeah. Just a little too long a time in between turns and stuff yeah. like that. Um, I really like it. But again, if you're going to own it, I don't have to have it. Mm -hmm. And it's great. I, mean, I, I love this game. Number 11. 11. It's, your, it's the last game on this video specifically. Oh. Yeah. You're in for a treat. I I don't know if that's sarcastic or not. I don't know either. <laughs> I don't know. Is it on your on your It is on my shelf. Okay. It is on my shelf. It is Obsession. Obsession. Okay, so I've still never played this yeah, game. Yeah, you can't talk about this one because you haven't played it. I can it's talk an... about the show. I know the show that uh well, it's not that, Pride that, and that, Prejudice, you yeah. mean? No. Oh, I know what you're talking about. What's it called? Uh, see, Bridgerton. I almost called it Bridge to Terror Business. Bridgerton. Oh my gosh, that's a sad <laughs> movie. And book. That. Anyways, this is Obsession, uh, made by Dan Halligan. This is uh, Cayenta Games. This is his publishing company. Uh, this is a game that is Pride and Prejudice, or Bridgerton in a box, kind of. I mean, it's obviously not the exact same, but I love the theme of this game because not only is the theme interesting enough for me to introduce it to my wife and my mom and people that care about those shows, 
but the theme intertwined with mechanics is what really makes it shine. Yeah. You're you're basically trying to bring your name back into prestige and power in Victorian England. And essentially, you're hosting parties and trying to have prestigious guests come and show up and say, wow, the, the Doolins hosted an excellent tea party <laughs> and things like that. And at the same time, you're inviting guests, you're spending money, and you're sending butlers and other different things to the area. And then they're not usable for the next turn because they're at the party. So they have to do something else. And it, it just makes sense. Mm -hmm. Everything you do in this game makes sense. There's mm -hmm. a reason why you do it. And it makes sense thematically. Yeah. I can ex explain everything so simply because it all just works together in a wonderfully oiled machine. And that is Obsession. I've only played it a handful of times. Uh, I really, really want to get the upstairs downstairs expression, expansion because I've heard from people like Maggie at Thinker Themer and genuinely Jazz. everybody, yeah, Jazz as well, that it's kind of a must have. Like, yeah. if you like Obsession, it will replace the base game for you. Uh, he's also putting out something new uh, soon, not like a full blown expansion, but just something small. Dan Halligan is an excellent uh, designer and publisher, really one of those like homegrown, you can email him and he'll answer anything, and it's just him. I mean, it's him and him alone. Hmm. And this game is is great, and you should check it out. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to trying it because of jazz, especially. Yeah. Like him, you and him just going on and on about it's, it. It's so good. It's yeah. really it's really good. I don't see this ever leaving my collection. I don't know if it'll continue to rise or fall in my top 20. With more plays, we'll see what happens. But that's our top 20 through 11 and we will come see back you. for some really hefty yeah, games. Yeah, just click that next button in the bottom will of the come out the same YouTube day? viewer Probably. thing. Probably the next day or something. We don't know. We're winging it. Like Wingspan. Will Let's that be in your top ten? No. Oh. It's good, though. <laughs> we'll see you next time. <laughs>